Until now, we have studied light reflection and transmission through a medium of constant refractive index. In this video, we are going to learn what to do when n is not constant. Before that, let's review the Fermos principle, which is general and not limited to a medium with special conditions. The Fermos principle says that light rays travel along the path of least time. Also, we clearly defined what we mean by path. The optical path length is defined as length times refractive index. So it's not simply a length. What if the refractive index is not constant? Specifically, we study the case for which n varies with position. We call this kind of media graded index media or GRIN. The starting point for such an inhomogeneous medium is the general equation of Fermos principle. Look at the figure below. Here we have two points A and B and light travels between A and B. But here N is a function of R or the position. For this case, the Fermos principle is defined as delta interval from A to B, N as a function of R, dS, equals to zero. Here, variables x, y, and z are functions of parameter s. The letter delta in the left side of the interval is a symbol of variation. Perhaps you remember this form of equation from classical mechanics. We could obtain the Euler-Lagrange equations of motion using the calculus of variation. Here, we don't care about the derivation. We only want to apply the equation and find the trajectory of light. For the special case of homogeneous medium for which n is constant, the integral is simplified as n times integral a to b ds, which is nd, where d is the distance between a and b. Because n is not a function of r, we can take it out of integral. If you're interested in knowing the full derivation of ray equation for an inhomogeneous medium, see Appendix 1 of Principles of Optics by Born and Wolf, 7th edition. In this appendix, you can find the details of derivation of ray equation. But here, we don't care about the details. We only want to use the equation and find the results. Anyway, the trajectory can be obtained using the ray equations. And we know that x, y, and z are functions of parameter s. If we use the variational method, we can find the following equations for ray. For example, the first one is d over ds of n times dx over ds. And the result is equal to the partial derivative of n with respect to x. And we have similar results for y and z. In three dimensions, we can use the gradient for n. And the equation is simplified as follows, where r has three components, x, y, and z. This is extremely difficult to solve. So we need to find a simpler solution. One method of solving is to define x and y as a functions of z. How it's possible? We can start with this equation. ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared. Now, if I factor dz from the right side and take the square root, I obtain the following equation. ds is equal to dz times square root of 1 plus dx over dz squared plus dy over dz squared. If we only consider paraxial rays, 
The second and third terms inside the radical are negligible. In this case, I can simply write ds is approximately equal to dz, and the equations are simplified as follows. So here, as you see, we have derivatives with respect to z instead of s. So the equations are much simpler. These are partial differential equations, while the previous ones were parametric equations. For the trivial case of homogeneous medium for which n is constant, the derivatives in the right side of these two equations become zero. And since n is constant, we can take it out of parentheses. So in that case, we will have two equations. The second derivative of x and y with respect to z, both become zero. And this is simply the equation of a straight line. But when n is not constant, the trajectory would be something like the following figure. But we want to find the trajectory exactly. As a special case, we consider a slab whose refractive index is only a function of y, but it is constant along x and z. In this case, we obtain the following equations. The figures show that n only varies along y, but it is constant along x and z. In this case, the paraxial ray equation is simplified. So in the right side, we don't have partial derivative. We will have simple derivative with respect to y. Or I can rearrange the equation and write the second derivative of y with respect to z is equal to 1 over n, which is a function of y, times the derivative of n with respect to y. So we cannot solve this equation until we know the function of n. So we should have the explicit form of n as a function of y. As a special case, we assume that n squared of y is equal to n0 squared times 1 minus alpha squared y squared. So in this case, n0 and alpha are parameters which are constant. More accurately, alpha is the period of trajectory. Also, we assume that alpha y squared y squared is much less than one, so that we can apply the Taylor series and only keep the first two terms. So here, the square root of one minus alpha y squared y squared is simplified as one minus one half of alpha y squared y squared. In fact, I have used the Taylor expansion of 1 minus alpha squared y squared to the power of 1 half. Therefore, the ray equation is simplified as the following, because here we have n as a function of y. So we can simply take the derivative and find this equation. We will find the trajectory soon in the next slides, but be careful, this is a light ray path. It's not a wave having a wavelength. So until now, we have only considered the ray theory of light, not the wave theory. So the figure might be misleading. And the right figure shows n as a function of y. Okay, so if we simplify the equation, finally we will have the second derivative of y with respect to z is approximately equal to minus alpha squared y. So this function is familiar and has a harmonic solution like sine and cosine function with period of two pi over alpha. We assume that the initial conditions are y at zero equals y zero and dy with respect to dz is equal to theta zero at z equals to zero. So with these conditions, the solution of this differential equation is 
y as a function of z equal to y0 cosine alpha z plus theta 0 over alpha sine of alpha z. And now you see why the period or pitch is 2 pi over alpha. Also, we can find the slope of the trajectory by taking the derivative of y with respect to z, which is minus y0 alpha sine of alpha z plus theta 0 cosine alpha z. The next example is an optical fiber whose refractive index varies as n0 squared times 1 minus alpha squared times x squared plus y squared. Also here, we assume that x and y vary very slowly so that I can write alpha squared times x squared plus y squared much less than 1. And similar to the previous example, I can simplify and find the following equations. Here, I have two differential equations, while in the previous one, I had only one equation, because in that case, the refractive index was only a function of y, but here, it depends on x as well as y. So, I have two differential equations. And again, the solution of these kind of differential equations are harmonic functions with period 2 pi over alpha. So we should have the initial conditions to solve the differential equations. Here we assume that the initial x and y are x0 and y0, and the corresponding theta are theta x0 and theta y0, which are defined as dx over dz or at z equals to 0. To simplify further, we assume that x0 equals to 0. In that case, the solution of differential equations becomes x equals to theta x0 over alpha times sine of alpha z and y is equal to theta y0 over alpha times sine of alpha z plus y0 cosine alpha z. The equations tell us if theta x0 is equal to 0, the parameter x would be constant, so the trajectory is in the yz plane. But if theta y0 is equal to 0, then the equations tell us that theta x0 is equal to alpha y0, and then and the solutions are simplified as x equals to y0 times sine of alpha z, and y is equal to y0 cosine alpha z. If we draw the profiles of these two examples, we'll get these two. In the first one, the trajectory is in the yz plane, while in the second one, we have both components, x and y. And of course, in both cases, the direction of propagation is along z-axis. The first one is called meridional, but the second one is helical. 